touch of this healing Christ is guaranteed here today. His touch makes whole without questions. His touch will be made manifest in everyone's life this service. That looks like you. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. We have seen all kinds of manifestations today. You'll be added to that list right now. Amen. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks for who he is. Give him thanks for who he is. Give him thanks for who he is. Ask him to reach out to you in person today by his word. Ask him to open your eyes today to behold wondrous things out of his word. Ask him for a life encounter with the world today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we are here in your presence. Let your presence make all the difference today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Someone said in the first service or second service, said, I can't tell I was just in a new atmosphere. I was in some atmosphere. And 24, 24 years issue of is a pioneer with swollen scrotum disappeared. The atmosphere changed his life. That atmosphere is still here right now. It will make a difference in your life. Jesus, let no one return without your touch today. Amen. It's our covenant family day. Let every siege on any family be finally broken today. Amen. The same way you rescue three million people out of Egypt one day. Let every besieged family be rescued finally today. Amen. Let no sickness escape the dagger of your balm today. Let your word go forth and let the light thereof cause the health of everyone to spring forth speedily. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I have dominion. Yes. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated, please. Now, is there no balm in Gilead? That's our teaching series and we're on part two of it today. Is there no physician there? Jeremiah 8 and verse 12. Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The great physician now is there. The same baptizing Jesus. He speaks the broken hearts to cheer. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Sweetest note in seraph song, sweetest name on mortar tongue, sweetest carol ever song, Jesus, blessed Jesus. He speaks the broken heart to cheer. His healing balm, the, his principal healing balm is a word. Then inside the world, we find the specific prescriptions here and there. And as we engage those prescriptions, we experience a revolution in our life. Now, the good news today is that your health will undergo a revolution today. A 360 degree turn around. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. 
Because every time the light of his word breaks forth, the health of his people springs up speedily. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy head shall spring forth speedily. It delivers instantly. Somebody was set free from impotency right here today. It delivers instantly. Instantly. That sick man took the communion and there was earthquake in his body. Went to the toilet. A snake longer than the hand of a man came out of him. Height of a man came out of him and the siege ceased. You know, there are a few snakes that are taller than me. And I'm not the tallest of all men. And now, came out of that man. That is an oppression of the devil that has no medical cure anywhere in the world. Today, every form of oppression of the devil that the eyes of new technology cannot catch, Jesus will flush them out of your life. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Everything in the world is the prescription of the physician. His name is Jesus. And among his key prescriptions for our total health is the mystery of the communion table. Now, first, understand your right to divine health. Because everything outstanding is a product of understanding. Understand that you have been bought with a price. The gruesome price of 39 wicked Roman tribes that was lashed on Jesus. You throw one, you pull it, it pulls flesh along with it because it's planted with iron sharps, I mean, iron sharp point. And Jesus got 59 of it <laughs> by his wounds. <laughs> we are healed. He had those 39 whips on his back with blood gushing to make you and me live a woundless life. The wounds on your head are declared over today. Amen. First Corinthians 6 and verse 20. You have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The price for your total head and my total head has been fully paid. And it is ignorance to pay for any good twice. Not when you have the receipt in your hand. Therefore, with that understanding, no sickness or disease has a legal hold on your life. Today is therefore declared your day of freedom. Today is declared your day of liberty. You are walking freely into your liberty today. Amen. Understand that the price for your total health has been fully paid. Now, number two, we know that most sickness and diseases are raw oppressions of the devil. So people travel and go place to place and return the same. Because the issues with us are not, they are beyond medical intervention. They are beyond medical intervention. They are beyond medical. There is no way any scan or MRI will see that snake. 
that came out of that man, there is no way. They have not developed to that level. And they can't develop to that level. Even ordinary people that besieged Peter's mother-in-law, Jesus rebuked the spirit back of it. They will say it's resistant to fever treatment. No. It's, it's an oppression of the devil that want to make life unbearable for that individual. But in Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, even when we are dead in sins, Jesus has quickened us together with Christ through the mystery of redemption, for by grace you are saved, and has made us, raised us up with him, and made us to sit with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that is located far above where the oppressors operate. That means by redemption, you are now ordained to be far above oppression. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 54 and verse 14. He said, In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Now, that word righteousness means in redemption. Because we have now become his righteousness through the mystery of redemption. He said we are ordained to be far from oppression. So when you use that Isaiah 54, 14, you put it together with Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, Ephesians 1, 20 and 21. You know that by redemption, you are far beyond the spheres where the oppressors operate. Therefore, today must mark the end of every oppression of the devil on your life. Yeah. Now, something just happened to me this morning. A man was sitting down here on the second row. Amen. Amen. He's from my place, my acquaintance. I gave him the first tract in his life, 1969. He was sitting on the second row in the first service today. My soul rejoiced. 1969, I gave him the first gospel track. Amen. He could remember the time I gave him, where we stood when I gave him. We were all little, little boys. But as far as then, when I'm asking you to serve Jesus, I'm not asking you to do what I'm... It's what I am doing that I'm asking you to do. He testified himself when he met him sometimes in 2014. He said, can you remember that you gave me a tract in 1969 in the month of July? We were standing at so-and-so place. I said, yes, I remember. He's a member of this church today. Glory to God. And his entire family. 1969. Where did you start? That you are breathing so hard. He said, we've been witnessing to who? And since when? Amen. Amen. One of the elders here, I led him to Christ in 1974. He was in the first service or second service today. I saw him also. 19 what? I won't ask when you were born. <laughs> so, so what are you doing that you are breathing so heavy? Amen. <laughs> As I saw one today, 69, I saw one there, 74. And I still went out yesterday. I came back past 8. 8 p.m. Amen. So I told my son, talking to him, I said, I mean, all these quotes, I've been in all of them all these years. Like, I, mean, I mean, you are doing, come and see, that's my area. Kingdom of the Prayer, I've been in it for long. I have a few years' experience. <laughs> I mean, so please wake up. So don't mind God for keeping me strong and healthy. He needs my service. And I'm offering it joyfully. You can't be serving God and be serving sickness at the same time. So wake up. 
wake up and enjoy serving Jesus. You get hit by faith, you secure your head by service. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Walking in the light. Oh, walk, oh, walk, 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 walk. Walking in the light. Walk, walk, walk. Walking in the light. Oh, walk. Walk, walk, walking in the light, walking in the light. Tessie, when did you meet me? What year did you meet me? I met you in secondary school. What year was it? That was 1977. Just sit down. 77. And she's always here on the second row. One of his sons walk in this place today. Hey, life! Life! You won't enter heaven alone. Oh. Amen. Many will enter there through you. Amen. So that young lady, I met her in 1977. And she's having a nice time with Jesus. She's always been very bright in the faith. She's still alive, pumping weather. Amen. I won't ask her how old she was, but she was very old. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm teaching you what works. And I'm showing you that it works. You don't have an excuse. In the name of Jesus, whatever pertains to those who are serving God, you never miss your portion in it. Now, what is in the communion that heals? In the first instance, let's find out what is the communion. As they were eating, Matthew 26, verse 26 to 28, Jesus took the bread from their table and blessed it and break it and gave it to them and say, take it. This is my body. After the same manner, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it to them and said, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So, the communion is the mystery of the flesh and the blood of Jesus through faith in the bread that we eat and the fruit drink that we take. So, it's not any special thing that's manufactured from somewhere and now it is now the communion, no. As they were eating. No special manufacturing or preparation. As they were eating. It is the mystery of the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Symbolized through physical materials. Such as the bread we take. And the drink we drink. But Jesus gave an analogy that is so vivid as he was trying to compare this communion with the manner that Israel took all through their 40 years of journey in the wilderness. In John 6 and verse 48 to 58, Jesus said, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread that comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. 
I am the living bread which comes down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread that I will give him is my body, my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So it's given to offer life to mankind. The Jews then spoke among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus responded, Very I say unto you, very, very I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. What? Are you saying we are dead? He said, no. He said, whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. Another kind of life. A higher kind of life. The God order of life. The heavenly order of life. The heavenly order of life. What that means is, through the communion, we begin to manifest the heavenly order of life. Is there sickness in heaven? Is there disease in heaven? Is there oppression of devil in heaven? So the communion is a mystery that empowers believers to operate the heavenly order of life. Whatever you can't imagine happen in heaven. It's not permitted to happen in your life. Amen. Because by the communion, the eternal life in you is activated for manifestation. At new birth, at new birth, you have eternal life. And that eternal life is activated as often as you eat this bread and drink this blood. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 26, Jesus said, Paul said, For as often as you, de- you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. So, it shows in the life of people. The communion you are partaking today will keep showing in your life. It means ye do show the purpose of the Lord's death till he comes. Something the world around you can see. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your divine health will be the order that anybody around you can see and feel. Do you know that some of us here are at the age of 120? Nothing will smell around you. Yeah. You never shit on your body. Yeah. You never piss on your body. Yeah. They never carry you to the bathroom. Yeah. They will never have to bath for you. Yeah. <laughs> As often as he take this bread, eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Smith Wigglesworth smiled to heaven, fully dressed, decoratively dressed. This was the mystery behind his unshakable health. I saw that in 77 and I began to put myself on the communion as a lifestyle. Is it not showing today? There are many, many in this church who don't know the meaning of sickness anymore. Your name will be added to that list today. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. Now, very quickly, what is in the flesh that heals? What is in the flesh that heals? First, I'm going to use about three, four illustrations. Number one, there was this incident where the sons of the prophet gathered some vegetables for their meal. 
And when they served it, they discovered some poison was inside. Master, there is death in the pot. And he said, have you any meal? Meal here means a leftover bread or something. Now bring it and put the meal inside it. And they pour it out again and there was no more harm. Now, this is that miracle meal. As this goes into your, the, the pot of your life, your belly, every poison that may have find its way there will be neutralized. Amen. And there was no more harm. Everything harming you from within yes. shall be flushed out of your life. Amen. That's in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 39 to 41. So we have the picture of a miracle meal that neutralizes every form of poison in our system. Number two illustration is what we saw in Exodus chapter 11, uh, chapter 7, verse 11 and 12, how uh, Moses put down the rod before Pharaoh and was turned to a serpent. And the magicians also did that by their enchantment. And theirs also became serpent. And this... Uh, the serpent of Aaron said, all of you line up and swallow them one by one. It's all vanity. He didn't add to the weight of that one. When he picked it up, it's the same weight of rod. That means anything the enemy has to offer is vanity. There is nothing there. It's just deception. Nothing but deception. So every deception of the enemy tormenting your life will be swallowed up today. So when you hear that uh, moving object, moving object, those are all rods. The serpents of the magicians overrunning through your body, tormenting you, making life unbearable for you. But as you take this rod, now wait a minute. Jesus is the rod that came forth out of the stems of Jesse. How many will say amen to that? Amen. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. A rod shall come forth out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow from his roots, and the seven spirits of God shall rest upon him. And Revelation 5 6 shows us that Jesus is the carrier of the seven spirits of God. Can I hear your amen? amen. So Jesus is that rod. Yes. Amen. amen. I said, Jesus is that rod. Amen. I said, Jesus is that rod. Amen. And so when he said, This is my flesh, come on now, this is my rod. This is my rod. As you take it, expect all the rod magicians inside you to be swallowed up in victory. So everything the enemy has planted inside your life that's tormenting you will be swallowed up today. Hey. Someone here was diagnosed with several sicknesses. Not so there is no particular name. It's a compound situation. Several sicknesses. Amen. And if you see her, you will know that she was really tormented. And partook of the communion. And vomited a padlock. With three keys. What kind of sickness is that? When I saw the padlock, it was as new as if they bought it yesterday. This person has been there all her life. Put that on the screen. It is not something that any medical center can handle. So I don't care what it is that the enemy has planted in you. As this rod gets inside, they will get out of you. <laughs> Look at the young lady. Look at the padlock. That golden color, padlock with three keys. I had those things in my hand. Not that you are playing as a child and then you swallow something. This is a planting of the devil. It's a plantation of the wicked. Now, every plantation of the wicked in your life shall be flushed out today. They shall be flushed out today. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's the second illustration of what is in the bread that he is. The rod that swallows up every rod of the stranger is in that bread. So as you take it today, expect every strange movement in your body. Every moving object over in your system to be swallowed up in victory today. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Number three illustration of how, I mean, what is in the bread. Hallelujah. 
Now, the flesh is the New Testament manner that holds higher value than the manner that our forefathers ate in the wilderness. That's what Jesus said. Your fathers did it manna in the winter. Go to 58. And are dead. He said, He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. He won't taste death. When this time comes, he just steps out into the grave beyond. He won't say, hey, ah, oh, oh. He will just step into the great beyond with a smile on his face. Shall never die. You know the meaning never. Shall never die. So every die and dead organ in anyone's body bounces back to life today. Yeah. For 40 years, their legs did not swell. This will be chapter 8, verse 4. For 40 years, there was not one feeble person among their tribes. <laughs> For 40 years. And what was it they were living on? On manna. Exodus 16, 35. And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came to the land inhabited, land inhabited. They did eat manna even until they came to the borders of Canaan. That was the mystery behind their super health. And Jesus said, this is the original manna they were looking for. I am that bread. Amen which came down from heaven that my man may eat thereof and not die. Therefore I decree every dying organ in anyone's body to bounce back to life now. Yeah. They were placed on manna for 40 years and they delivered all through the 40 years. Now, is placing you and I on the manner of the communion, it will never stop to deliver in your life. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. I've been on this since 77, life. Life. On it since 1977, that's 42 years now. So it's correct. That you can be on this thing for the next 40 years and all the days of your life. He said, as often as he take it. So it's not tied to time. It does not expire. As long, no sickness can deliver, develop resistance against it. As long as you did eat this bread and drink this cup, you keep showing that Jesus truly really died to make you live a super healthy life, among others. What a joy. So you don't need to carry bottle up, up and down and carry one uh, half bottle. You take one. <laughs> you don't need to. You had the testimony of um, the Olusha girls, how they were there in India and dying of, you know, bone marrow cancer and was in the service like this, who could run to the service and took the communion from Fanta and Biscuit. Not that you eat part of the bread and you keep the remaining. They say, why? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. Faith in the world is what delivers answers to our questions. So come on, I. As often as you take this, you will never know weakness anymore in your life. You will never know sickness anymore in your life. In the name of Jesus, beginning from today, Health crisis comes to an end in your life. Yeah. That's what is in the bread. 
And I pray that in the name of Jesus, today put an end to all concerns on your health. Yeah. Finally, which is very important, he blessed the bread and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him. Their eyes were opened. Now, from the last testimony we have, not only their spiritual eyes, their physical eyes were open. That young man from Togo said has been uh, suffering from blood vision, cannot read anything on his phone without his eyeglass, he cannot read nothing. But as soon as he took the communion, he looked at it, eh, 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 my eyes open. So every eye defect represented in this service at the instance of that breath, yes, yes, yes. I decree your eye opening miracle. Yeah. But more importantly, he opens your spiritual eyes. He said, their eyes were open and they knew him. And you know that revelation is behind, is behind every revolution in the life of a believer. He opened their eyes by the mercy of the bread and they knew him. So it empowers your flow in revelation. It empowers your access to revelation. And nothing guarantees a turn around in our head like revelation. Remember, his flesh was consumed away that it could not be seen. And his bones that were not seen stick out. Job 33 verse 21 to 25. Yet, his soul drawn nigh to the grave and his life to the destroyer. But if there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his rights in God, revelation, then God will be gracious unto him and said, deliver him from going down to the pit. He has found the light. He has found the revelation. He has found the appropriate word. Then his flesh shall be fresher that a child, he shall return to the days of his youth. That's how revolutionary revelation can be. It turns things around 360 degrees. Amen. As you partake of this communion today, I decree your sweatless flow into realms of higher revelation. The good news is, blindness will be dealt with here. Long sightedness, short sightedness will be dealt with here today. Yeah. And your spiritual eye that has suffered spiritual blindness over time shall be liberated finally today. Yeah. Those are some of the things that are in the flesh, in the bread that we take, that makes whole. Your case is settled. Yeah. Now, what is in the blood? In the blood? that heals. We all know, according to scriptures, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11. Jesus said, this is my blood. My blood. And that blood enjoys absolute immunity to sickness and disease. So the communion is a kind of blood transfusion. My defied blood, your defied blood is flushed out and replaced with his perfect blood. And because the health of a man is as dictated by his blood, so with the perfect blood of Jesus, you are entitled to perfect soundness. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Uncleanliness will leave you alone. Feediness will lose its grip of your life. Because that blood is shed for the remission of sins. Amen. How much more with the blood of Jesus quicken 
our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So that talks about your spiritual health. And then you partake of that blood. It is the one that runs through your brain. So by redemption, you have the mind of Christ. By the communion, it is activated. So you are entitled to sound mind. Son, what? Mine. So, issues of memory loss. We had a testimony like that in the course of the service. Someone said he's had memory loss for about 15 years. Yes, it cleared off. So, today, every clog in your mental system clears off finally. Amen. Whatever makes you forget it, like a 140 year old man, clears off today. Amen. Whatever makes it, I call you dull. In your class, in your profession, clears off your life today. So it makes us whole, spirit, soul, and body. We were bought with the precious blood of Jesus to glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are the Lord. So the communion empowers. Empowers our spirit man to live a life that glorifies God and empowers our body with perfect soundness. That's your portion today. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. So by the blood we share same DNA with Christ. By the blood we share same characteristics with Christ. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, whatever cannot be traceable in Christ ends in your life today. Yeah. I said they all end in your life today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, the blood has power to penetrate every part of your body. That's wherever blood is not flowing, life is no longer there. So as you partake of this blood, every part of your body may have been infected by the wickedness of the wicked. We'll clear off finally today. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. It is also the blood of rescue from the pit of death. In Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 11 and 12, he said, as for thee also, and he's talking to who? The Holy Ghost is talking to the rider of the ass from verse 9. You see that there, a picture of Jesus in prophecy. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He's just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a cord, the fall of an ass. Amen. And who was the rider of the ass? Jesus. Then God began to speak to him, as for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have set, sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Now remember I said, when he sees a veil of his soul, he shall be satisfied. Now the people can be free. That's the many. You know? So, even today, do I declare, when is it? Today. When is it? Today. Now, Brother Lucio got took the communion on Sunday, went for his test in preparation for bone marrow transfer on Tuesday, and can't find bone marrow cancer again. It happened that Sunday. They only discovered it on, on Tuesday. It happened. Your own will happen now. Amen. That thing that won't let you conceive will clear up now. Amen. That thing responsible for continuous miscarriage will be put, put to an end now. Amen. That feeling you can't es explain will come to an end today. He said, even today, so his blood is a weapon of instant intervention 
Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee today, not tomorrow. Today, not tomorrow. Today. Hallelujah. Do you know from this service today, we have testimonies of God clearing autism. I said autism will be clear today. Every brain condition beyond medical expertise intervention we give way today. Amen. How many know that sickle cell anemia has no medical solution? How many know that? But by the mercy of blood transfusion, that evil blood is purged out and the new blood is poured in and then SS is turned to AA. Amen. Now, that will happen to many here today. Every terminal disease, as that blood travels down through every part of your body, the blood went into the bone and the marrow of the Son of God and clear of the evil there. As this blood travels around, your blocked ear will be open. As this blood travels around, your impeached feet shall be repaired. As this blood travels around, whatever is out of order in your life will be put back to order. In conclusion, the truth is whatever is not in the line that you now belong becomes a legger in your life. He was not ashamed to call us brethren. So we belong to the same family. Amen. We are hearers of God and joint hearers with Jesus. So we belong to the same family. And so, whatever does not pertain to your new spiritual family lineage comes to an end. finally in your life. Yeah. Today is our covenant family day. I'm please listen. The whole last of Israel was wriggling under a curse until God sent his prophet Moses and bailed them out of that
generational long curse. They came out of it in one day as if it never existed. After 430 years. The cause of mediocrity, where no one's head rises from generation to generation. That is the cause of marital resistance that won't let people get married. Young men will grow from age to age and is their issue. One generation to another. Children, children, children. Mm. There are families where certain disease just travel through the line. You there are families that seem to suffer med mental retardation. Somebody testified here that there is no. I met someone some years ago who is a specialist in about four different areas. That plague is declared broken. It was by the war that Moses brought them out of Egypt. So by this prophetic proclamation, yes, you are out of your Egypt today. Yes. Your family is out of their Egypt today. Yes. In closing, God's redemptive plan covers your household. What must I do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved and thy house. It covers your household. So I decree that salvation enters your house today. And every siege of stagnation, frustration, and failure comes to an end in your family. Every siege of stagnation, frustration, and failure comes to an end in your family today. It's also important for us to know that our household is not limited to our you know, husband, wife, and children? No. The white man calls that nuclear family. We are talking about natural family now. Praise God. And so we saw Cornelius demonstrated what family means. He gathered all these king's men. Chapter 10 of Acts of the Apostles and verse 24. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Amen. Everybody that when anything happens to it affects you belongs to your family. Everybody. Therefore today, I decree that all of your kinsmen and women be loose from any age long bandage. <laughs> They are loose today in the name of Jesus. They are loose today in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Isaiah 33 and verse 20, the word says, Look upon Zion. The city of our solemnities. My eyes shall see Jerusalem a quiet habitation. Now, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. Neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. Now, verse 24. He said, and the inhabitant of that, uh, the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Amen. Now, that is the prophetic word concerning the winner's family. Amen. Beginning from this month, 
No one here shall say I am sick. Amen. Now, listen. No matter the attack launched from hell, he said shall not be taken down. So, no evil shall break into this covenant that has been declared today. Yeah. It shall be said of the winner's family worldwide, they don't get sick there. Yeah. They don't die young there. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. In closing, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 30, let's go through it. For I have received of the Lord, Paul the Apostle speaking, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night that in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Do to keep remembering, reminding yourself that things I've already paid for on your behalf. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now, he went on in verse 26, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this blood, ye do show, 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 show the Lord's death, the purpose of that death as it relates to you till he comes. You do show the value of the redemptive price he has paid. Ye do show, ye do show. Now, from today, the impact of the mystery of the communion will keep showing in your life. Yeah. Now, verse 27. He said, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, let therefore any a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the lost body. Now, for this cause, many are weak, which is contrary to his purpose. Many are sickly, which is what is ordained to, to deal with, and many sleep or die. Now, what that means is this the communion is heaven's toast. For our divine strength, divine health, and longevity. So as you partake of this today, expect the raw impartation of divine strength. No one in our camp will be termed feeble. Weakness is consumed away from your life today. Expect impartation of divine health. Sickness shall have no more hold on any part of your body. Expect confinement of longevity. No one dies young in your household anymore. You shall not die young. You shall fulfill the number of your day. In the name of Jesus. That's what to expect from the Lord's table. And that's what you are getting. After God introduced the blood, Egypt could not hold down Israel anymore. Go, 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 go. Everything holding down your family, your household, from now, by the power of the blood, will let go of you. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. 
Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. If you have encountered any light in this service, give him thanks. Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> your household is free. And you are free as a person. Everyone in chains in your household is set free today. Every generational siege is over today. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Very quickly, someone is here today that is not saved yet, that's not born again yet. Jesus said you must be born again because that's the only way to see and experience the blessings of the kingdom. If you're here, you want to turn your life over to Jesus, it costs you nothing. He paid the entire price for your redemption and my redemption. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. You want to say yes to Jesus? Please stand to your feet. God bless you as you stand. God bless you. You want to surrender your life to Christ? Please stand to your feet wherever you are. God bless you as you do. God bless you as you do. Stand to your feet today. And God bless you as you do. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ and become bona fide partakers of the blessings of the kingdom. You are here, you want to rededicate your life to Christ. You know things are not the way they used to be, but you want to return back to God. You want to reconnect back to God. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand. God bless you as you do. You want to dedicate your life to Christ, please stand. And God bless us, you do. Now, let everyone stand in both for the first and second call. Go to the nearest eye to where you are, and there will be praying for you. Just move to the nearest eye to where you are. Some church officials are there. They will assist you in getting your sleep filled and be settled. Thank you, Jesus. There shall be waves of instant healings right now. Whatever you can imagine in the body of Jesus that is in your body, begin to reject it. Begin to reject it now. Today is my day of liberty. This thing has been paid for. It has no right to torment my body anymore. It has no right to torment my body anymore. I'm walking into liberty today. I'm walking into liberty literally today. I'm walking into liberty literally today. Everybody standing for prayers. For salvation and dedication, please bow your heads, lift up your right hand to heaven. Lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I might be set free today. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Amen. Keep those hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them to you. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered all the days of your life. You have stepped into the kingdom of light to never go back into darkness. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Please ensure that you return your sleep. To those church officials around with you, I will be in touch with you today. Be reminded of Believers Foundation class that holds every Monday. Please take advantage of it. You go for only two Mondays, 6 to 7.30 p.m., and then you are equipped to live a triumphant Christian life. Don't miss that for anything. Shall we all rise, please? How many believe their own testimony is today? How many believe to return with their testimony today? Let the steward stay their positions right now. Thank you, Jesus. 
Somebody had fought 